I was taking afternoon coffee with a rather good chum of mine. If you're into motorbikes, you'll definitely have heard of him. None other than Toby from Ridercam TV. What I hear you say? Yes, Ridercam TV. I know, I know. Claim to fame or what? Seriously, if you're into bikes, you've got to check out his channel. He runs it along with another guy called Mark, another great guy. Uh, Rider Cam TV. I'll put a link to their channel below. Everything bike related, product reviews, safer riding with Roadcraft and Ross Bacor Mall. I'll put a link to them below. Well worth having a look at again if you're into bikes. Anyway, we're enjoying a coffee, chatting away, and Toby just happens to drop into the conversation that he'd really like his logo made into illuminated sign to put well I'll leave him explain that bit so I thought love to make that sounds like a great idea so that's what this video is about how I went about taking a digital image a file on a computer and turning it into illuminated sign So this may at first seem a slightly convoluted way to approach it, but it's, I'm going to use the software that I'm most familiar with to perform the individual tasks that I need to do. So I'm going to start with Vectric VCarve Pro, even though I'm not going to be running this job on the CNC. Like I say, I'm really familiar with this software. So I'm going to set my work size to 800 by 800. I don't care about the thickness. And the reason for that is I'm going to be putting this in a circle, which is 800 mil in diameter. So there's my circle. Now I'm going to import my SVG. I'm lucky enough to have got the logo in an SVG file. And what I want to do initially is size it so it fits inside of this circle. I need to leave a little bit of room around the outside because there's going to be a border around the outside of the circle. So I tell you what, let's draw in the border. That's a 40mm border because I need to hide some LED light strips in there, which means there'll be a standoff underneath it. Maybe a 20mm standoff, quite close there, but quite close there. That all fits. Okay, cool. So that's the size I need, but it's too big for me to cut. So I'm gonna, I need to make sure that these individual pieces will fit inside of the max area of my lasers. I'm gonna cut out a four mil laser ply. Now all of these letters are individual pieces. All of the bits of the bike are individual pieces. So I'll be able to play around with those and resize them, etc., as I need to but this swish won't fit and this line under here won't fit so i'm gonna to have to cut them into smaller bits my max work area is 498 by 319 so if i draw a ball 498 by 319 i can use the box to work out what size I need to cut these bits down to. So I'll just leave that there a sec. Pop into node editing mode. And cut there. delete the box I'll export this as an SVG and then I can bring it into the laser software which is X tools creative space and arrange it inside my cuttable work area and get them cut out so I've imported everything into X tool creative space and I've rearranged everything off a of camera just to save a little bit of video time as you can see it's all completely mixed up so it's going to be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to put it back together and realign it. I've split it into two canvases I've managed to get it on. 
initially three, but rearrange and I've got it on to two. So I can burn this one first. And like I said, four mil ply, and I know the three mil basswood setting will cut through four mil ply. So I'm set to cut power at 100, speed at 15. I've got my focal length set, so I'm all good to go. So I'm using my circle cutting jig to cut this big background disc of 800 mil. If you've not seen this jig before, I'll put a link to the video that I made it in, showed you how to make it in, in the description below. And also, a shameless plug, a link to the um, Etsy product where you can buy the 3D components and the plans to make the jig. And if you do that, you'll be helping me out a great deal. And thank you very much in advance. Well, that's the disc cut, including an absolutely super smashing gouge right across my clamp rail because apparently I set the depth wrong on my router. Really? Have I actually done this before? Apparently not. So now I need to cut the border pieces. Now, in order to save wastage, because the border pieces are obviously 800 mil diameter as well. So that would be, blimey, masses of waste. So in Vectric again, I was going to show you this, but it bloated the video out. I found out in post, which hasn't happened yet. How spooky is that? So I divided the circle into quarters and then I've cut out or I've drawn out this quarter bits and I tried to cut it out on the laser, but that was a, a no show because this is such dense ply, it didn't like it, didn't want to play, said no, toys out the pram, the whole shebang. So I'm going to cut these bits out on the CNC. This is like, use every tool you can lay your hands on, Graham. What a laugh. So I've got a bit of type on two. That'll give me plenty of assembly time. But it goes off quicker than type on three. not quite right. That joint's not come out very well. Don't know what I did there. Now this is just a bit of sealer on the underneath of the border where the LED lights are going to go because they're self-adhesive and this will just make it that bit easier for the 
adhesive on the back of the strip to stick to the ply. And then I can glue this to the backboard. And while that's going off, I can paint up the lettering. So I'm about there with the filler in. There's a couple of little places that may need just a little bit of stopping after the paint. A very bit of fine filler if you're not familiar with that term. But for now, that's good enough because I'm going to use an old decorator's trick that a friend of mine, ex-professional decorator, told me about, which is essentially the first coat that you put on is kind of sacrificial in places you put your first coat of undercoat on and it reveals all of the imperfections for you much better than just trying to do it by eye or by feel. So ready for a spot of paint and first coat as mentioned earlier and as preparation is the key to success I'm again not as prepared as I thought I was because I can't find my little tray so I'm going to have to use the packet that the uh, roller sponges come in and order another one. Anyway I'm using Armstead primer and undercoat combined I used this uh, before, uh, sprayed it on a little job I took on last year. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see what I did. It was a under stair storage solution for a local lady. And I sprayed all of the MDF with this. Now this is thin to 30% so it would go through the spray gun which is a uh, Fuji spray and I'll tell you what it worked fantastic really delighted with that I must do a review for you superb so this is going to require again multiple coats first coat is going to be a um, just a bit of coverage grain filler and to reveal any imperfections that I've missed and then we'll deal with those bit of fine filler like a stopper if you're in the car trade then a light rub and another coats probably I'm expecting it to take three coats of undercoat but while this is drying I can spray the rest of the logo parts so I don't waste any time So 
when the undercoat was roller was okay, I've done it before and it's it's fine as long as you give it a good flattening afterwards. And I've flattened with two forty. But applying the top coat with the roller, I'm just not happy with the finish. So we've got to spray. And I'm using the Fuji spray kit that I mentioned earlier. Superb. So the paint's had overnight to cure and it's gone off really well and now I'm ready to fit the lights. Now Toby's dropped off these LEDs that he'd like to use. There's this huge plug on the bottom that I've got to drill a hole for and that's going to need some 16 mil across but 10 mil thick so I'm going to have to use a 10 mil drill bit and drill two holes side by side. That's really annoying. I'm gonna have to be really careful now because obviously this is the finish and I don't want to screw it up at this point. So we're gonna drill right in the middle of the backing piece, which is 12 mil, very gently so that we don't shoot through and scar the inside of the side. Gonna change, use a smaller bit first. This is making me nervous. That feels a lot better because if I overshoot now, I'm just gonna go into that bit of ply. there. So now I'll step up, that was a 5, up to an 8. And then up to a 10. That's the first one done. Bit of a clean out with a chisel. And we're through, fantastic. So as I mentioned earlier, these lights are self-adhesive, sticky back, and they're on a five meter reel, which is trimmable, but it's gonna be a mare. So what I'm going to do is plug this end in, I've got a couple of little arrows here and then that will not fit in there will it? So that's just going to have to turn and I'm going to need a little pokey stick. So here goes, it's a bit of a one time only affair really. Like y'all. Tell me, tell me. Okay, time to trim, and I think that's my trim point. Yeah, right on the little line there. And that looks like a perfect spot. And they're dead right, look. Scissorized. Oh, don't put it there, Graham. Idiot. So now I'm gonna lay out the logo parts and I think the best thing I can do is start with this bar which gives me 
a straight line to work from. So I've got their logo up on my phone here and I'm just going to do my best to recreate it. Well, there it is. I've just checked with Toby and he's delighted with the layout. So I glue it up. I'm going to use medium cyano to glue it, but without um, accelerator, I think, so that I've got time to make sure the alignment's right. They're really fiddly little bits. So I think I'm going to start with the main bar because everything sort of stems from that and then just slowly move through the rest of it, check an alignment against uh, the digital image that I've got of the logo. So this is going to take a while. Well, I think the finished product speaks for itself. It looks stunning. The contrast between the red and the gray and the white, I think is fantastic. But we've got LEDs as well. And Toby, the blooming showman, has chosen light changing LEDs. So let's have a little light show, shall we? Let's go out in style. And lights on.